Uh, thank you, all of you. I'm in Padova, you know. <laughs> um, this is a very old uh, building in Padova in, in my back. Uh, it's a joke, naturally, a, a virtual, a virtual uh, um, background. Uh, thank you, uh, Juliana. Thank you, all of you. And um, today I'm very, very um, happy to be here to discuss with you about this, uh, uh, this issue, this topic, because assessment is not so um, is not a, a topic so considered in our uh, teaching practices. And we think to uh, assessment only, normally we think to assessment only as a, some, um, something that uh, we put at the end of our practices. And uh, I think and I uh, find today to convince you that this is not assessment and that assessment is uh, uh, something that we have to learn to do. So uh, also in uh, higher education, we need to uh, teach um, students to, to, uh, to be able to uh, judge, to evaluate, to assess uh, other, their self and their context. So uh, assessment is, a, for me, assessment is a very, very important uh, issue that we need to discuss, uh, discuss in higher education didactic, didactics and uh, teaching and learning. Uh, there are two main reasons. Uh, the first reason is that our student can avoid to follow our teaching our lessons, uh, they can avoid to attend our lesson, but if they want to reach their uh, um, degree, they can't avoid to uh, do exams, to participate to assessment processes. So the second uh, reason for me more uh, important, more um, serious, I, I, I can say, uh, is that uh, um, the way in which, by which we communicate to our students that uh, we uh, do exam uh, is very, very influent on their uh, way to prepare themselves to exam, to pass the exam. So, the uh, way in which, by which we evaluate, we assess their learning uh, is very influential on how they uh, study, how they um, attend lessons, how they um, put attention on uh, one thing or another thing in our courses. Uh, David Bau, just yesterday <laughs> um, gave a talk in an international conference and I, uh, I, I borrowed from him this, uh, this slide because he uh, explained very well how, uh, be, uh, why we, we need to put attention uh, on assessment because um, uh, there are many reasons uh, by which students uh, put uh, a, a big attention to, uh, to exam and to assessment. And we communicate uh, to uh, students what we value in our uh, teaching when we communicate the ways in which we assess. Uh, another thing that we have to, to think as, is that uh, um, when we uh, assess, we, um, we have to uh, consider how this assessment uh, um, let students improve. Um, I, um, I want to um, briefly uh, talk about Rick Stiggins. He um, worked uh, in an um, important foundation 
uh, where they um, prepare the tests for students. Uh, at the end of um, his work, he started to um, ask himself uh, if uh, his work uh, had uh, a reason, a good reason, because he started to, um, to ask a very important question, how we ca uh, can we maximize the positive impact of our score on learners? This is the very important thing that we have to think about uh, assessment how we, uh, uh, we influence uh, the motivation of our students where, uh, when we, uh, we propose them an exam or uh, an assessment, how we um, influence their learning uh, through assessment. The last uh, consideration uh, is that uh, I want you to you, you you see this slide and you consider which the way to help learners want to learn and feel able to learn. Uh, is, is this the first situation, the, the right situation, the, the right image or the left image? Only some reflection. Juliana, uh, stimulate me to, uh, to think about uh, uh, my, mm, my studies in student voice because uh, you, you, you can say in, in which way we can link student voice with assessment. I started to uh, consider this movement, student voice, when um, my son, that uh, in that time was uh, an 11 years old, uh, started to go to school only because he needed to go to school. But uh, his thinking, his, uh, his uh, opinions were not something that the professor considered. So I started to uh, think, why students uh, um, can't be a protagonist in school, how we uh, educate students to be responsible in their life also in schools and university. In that sense, uh, I started to uh, inquire, to explore uh, something about the role of students in uh, schools and university. Next, Uliana. And I, I encounter, encountered uh, the student voice movement. Uh, Cook Sader in 2002 uh, wrote in a, an important uh, uh, journal a call for researchers where she said there is something fundamentally amiss about building and rebuilding an entire system without consulting at any point those it is ostensibly designed to, to serve. The inefficacy of this approach becoming increasingly apparent as we move in the, into the 21st century. In, in which way uh, we, uh, can we um, let students be uh, active protagonists also in assessment processes? Because we, um, we let students participate participate to our teaching practice because uh, uh, social constructivist uh, um, perspective um, considered, um, let us consider students as active learners, but uh, we, we have not aligned our assessment practice with this perspective. And in this sense, I uh, started to say that uh, um, higher education uh, have to consider um, students as partners and not uh, um, customers. So students have to be 
partners in our practices also in assessment practices. Um, the last part of my uh, talk today is uh, um, in particular about the new vision that uh, I developed uh, in, uh, about assessment as a, an object that we have to teach to uh, students because in our life, uh, uh, assessment is a very important ability. So uh, I started to uh, to do uh, to consider uh, all these topics that uh, I um, I uh, cite I cited here, and uh, in my path uh, there there was a very important point when I. Uh, I, I encountered uh, um, three uh, researchers in England, researchers in England, Kay Sambel, Liz McDowell, and Catherine Montgomery, uh, that, uh, who wrote this uh, um, important book that, that I, trans I translated in, it, in Italian, uh, where uh, sh uh, they, um, they uh, propose a, a very new vis vision about, about assessment or a vision um, near my, uh, my emergent vision in that time, 2013, uh, or that assessment also in higher education um, has to be put in place, uh, has to um, be put in place uh, to improve uh, learning and not only to uh, check and control learning. Here, okay, some of my uh, important encounter was with David Nicol that uh, taught to me to be uh, very attentive about uh, feedback and very attentive of uh, the role of peer feedback in uh, assessment processes. Because if, uh, as I um, said before, if we want to teach to students uh, to be good assessor, we need to uh, put them in a situation where they can uh, experiment uh, to be assessor. And in this, in this type of situation, uh, peer review and peer feedback are important instruments to uh, assess, uh, to uh, teach to students to be assessor. Uh, I speak now of um, valutazione sostenibile, sustainable assessment in higher education. What is it? This is uh, uh, a way to consider assessment as something that is not. Uh, uh, as not to be important and uh, needed only in now and here, but we need to think to assessment uh, as, uh, as something that is needed by students in their future. So how we can teach in a way that assessment uh, uh, is uh, will be uh, important an important competence uh, of students. We we have to ask uh, some ourselves some questions about this, and uh, we can we have to consider that uh, um, assessment in higher education has to serve three scopes. Uh, the uh, certify and measure student learning, that is the old way to think to assessment. Uh, also helping students uh, to, improve, to improve their uh, learning, that is uh, uh, the perspective of uh, uh, formative assessment, but also assessment for learning, uh, but uh, uh, a sustainable um, uh, perspective on assessment is uh, uh, when we um, equip students, uh, equip students to be able to be assessor. In this way, we uh, give to students uh, the possibility 
to use uh, their autonomy in assessment also in their life after school and after university when there are no uh, professors or adults that uh, uh, say to students, okay, this is a good work. No, this is not a good work. You have to change. Students need to uh, become autonomous in their assessment processes. And in this sense, they, they will be autonomous also in their uh, self-assessment in many uh, in the different context. The last uh, um, consideration is what uh, we uh, can think to assessment in a digital world. Um, in my perspective, um, we have to um, uh, to um, go uh, beyond e as the practices of e-assessment and assume a new perspective on assessment uh, in, in a digital work, world. Because we, um, when we speak about e-assessment, we consider to use uh, um, uh, technologies to uh, do the same practices of assessment that we, uh, we did before the, um, introdu the integration of technology in um, uh, educational context. Today, uh, as Juliana said before, we are uh, in front of uh, uh, technologies that are very, very, invasive, very, uh, um, uh, how do you say, how, how can we say, very uh, integrated in our life and very influential uh, our life. Also, uh, if we, we are not conscious about it, many data uh, that we produce any, uh, each day only uh, tapping uh, 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 um, a, a, a bottom in our computer, we produce the data. And uh, we are in a situation where the, um, uh, the way in which we build uh, knowledge is different uh, from uh, the uh, previous age when uh, technologies uh, were less integrated and less invasive uh, in reference to our life. So also assessment uh, have to, uh, has to consider this situation and how we can consider this situation in front of this type of uh, world. I think that uh, um, there are many uh, potentialities uh, using um, uh, data, learning analytics, etc., in, uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, for improving assessment. For example, we can uh, personalize uh, feedback practices. Uh, by learning analytics, for example, in our uh, courses, we can change our feedback or to let students change their peer feedback, analyzing uh, our data by learning analytics. Or we, we can also uh, improve our criteria, uh, grading and criteria criteria of assessment, analyzing results of students along a course. Normally, we can um, uh, absolutely uh, consider these uh, technologies as strength, uh, as uh, um, good things in reference to assessment. But many data and many uh, information that we can collect 
to improve our life assessment and uh, uh, our practices um, have a risk um, that we use this data in a um, in a unfair way because uh, we can uh, i used here uh, um, a sentence by president kennedy uh, where he said uh, we can measure what we don't need to measure and this is the the big problem uh, how we can use this data and are we able to use with uh, uh, rightly this data for assessment there are many many level uh, where we need to improve our competencies to be able to uh, use in a right uh, way and when i say right I, I uh, mean equal, I mean in a justice way, uh, in respectful um, uh, of uh, uh, people that uh, have, uh, have, disab have disabilities or all this uh, type of uh, consideration. I use right in that uh, in many senses. Uh, in any case, we need to uh, develop competency uh, at a different level. As teachers, uh, we, we have to improve our abilities to uh, adequately and critically use data. For example, uh, are we um, uh, uh, able to integrate this data in our courses and are we able to teach our students to be able to read and interpret, interpret in a right way this data? And uh, are we able to choose the right data to assess and not uh, the wrong data that conduct in a false and mistaken way uh, to assess? And uh, um, if we consider the competencies uh, of teacher and students, but there are also an institutional level that we have to consider to insert the problem of data and intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence in uh, assessment practices. For example, are university uh, able to promote data literacy policies and deeply change their assessment structures? Are we able uh, or are university uh, not only able, but are university ready to do it? Are university um, uh, available to do it? So we need to be very very attentive in reference using data and intelligent uh, uh, artificial intelligence in our practice teaching and assessment practices uh, what i want to um, say to conclude is that uh, absolutely data i consider data analysis learning analytics intelligence artificial intelligence as a very important possibility for improving our life but we have also to consider this uh, um, these issues as a, a field of research uh, because research is only at the start in that uh, uh, field, uh, in particular in educational contexts. Please, if uh, you have uh, some uh, question, thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Valentina. Uh, I don't know whether from the various experiences and research activities uh, the participants are leading, uh, there, uh, there are questions that you might want to share with us. Um, particularly, uh, I found very interesting two slides. One, uh, the one explaining several types of uh, 
uh, assessment. I think it's. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go directly. I think this this slide is really, um, yeah. like, uh, illustrative of of your point of view uh, yeah. of the differences of uh, what assessment practice are. Yes. Um, Another thing I was thinking, and I think this is uh, more relating to this slide, is to which extent uh, nowadays the data-driven systems allows us to go beyond assessment of learning. In the sense, what I mean in, in concrete terms, like for example, if, you, if we, we, we have all used Moodle, Moodle has some uh, dashboards that allow us to see our progress in learning, but to which extent these data-driven uh, systems uh, uh, are um, empowering us or are just showing what uh, it's um, a very traditional idea of assessment that are, they are represent. I think you, your thoughts, Valentina, uh, align it very very well with these that that that, that nowadays yeah, yeah. the examples we have are more on the side of assessment of learning that but yeah. I don't know whether our audience thinks yeah, yeah. about this uh, that way I don't know if there is any thoughts uh, about that or somebody working in the field of learning analytics or uh, doing research on, in this uh, area. Uh, I think that uh, the problem um, are not uh, the, um, the tools and the instruments and the data and the analysis. The problem are teachers, because uh, uh, if we are able as teachers uh, to use this data and this system to improve learning, we can do it and we have many, many possibility to do it in a right way. Uh, the problem is that uh, many uh, teachers um, are not uh, competent, not only in intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence or big data or analysis, but are not competent in assessment. Uh, it's for this that uh, I say that in the first uh, path we have to uh, speak about assess more about assessment in our teaching and after we can introduce the problem of uh, uh, data literacy and uh, other competencies like this. Baud said a very important thing that we we don't uh, we have not to uh, separate formative assessment and summative assessment in the sense that in also in uh, um, summative assessment we can teach to students so if we use the summative assessment to uh, let students to become aware about assessment, about criteria, about uh, how we assess, also summative assessment is formative. So uh, a very important perspective that Paul introduced is that there are no more a difference a, a, a um, polarity between uh, formative and summative the, this two path can um, cross uh, if we use them in a way to uh, let students be able to evaluate this is uh, sustainable assessment. One thing I might want to say to add also to make sense of, of this uh, space of conversation is that you see how much data uh, is, uh, um, is assembled 
in several at several levels because you have marks for example that are part of the um, scoring system in higher education and the schooling system that then go to compose the certifications and when you go outside the university to search for a job you will show your uh, scores and your marks uh, it is uh, about uh, quantifying uh, and using data-driven systems where, for example, I was consulting the, the, um, uh, sorry, the figures of the Spanish system, university system, and I was astonished about the fact that, for example, mm, uh, medicine, uh, engineering, and so, and those careers require higher scores to enter than social work or arts or education. Education is one of the lowest, <coughs> requires the lowest scores. And you, you make immediately an equation, the metaphor is, okay, this, is, this has less value. The society gives less value to this because you, you need lower scores to enter to that career pathway. And instead to go to the, this other, because you will earn more, you will have a better reputation, you, get, you need higher scores. So this is also because the teacher is uh, under the weight of a system that is based on metrics and quantification and the technologies are not changing that situation, are just like uh, making this more um, they, they are making smoother or faster or easier to get the, the needed metrics, but they are not doing this certainly better. The idea instead is that uh, student voice approaches, uh, a sustainable assessment approaches will be game changers uh, from the human side for then shape technologies, good technologies, as you were saying. So thank you very much, Valentina.